here we go. Right, brand new series here, Chess Fundamentals. Shout out to Forward Chess for giving us this opportunity to make this series here. So make sure you guys get the Forward Chess app and get this free book. I'm going to link it for you guys so you guys can have it. Make sure you're using this book here. I'm going to show you a little bit about how you can use it and stuff like that. But here, Forward Chess, I got the book on the side here. This book is fire. It's a legendary book, by the way. Chess Fundamentals. I remember, as I was just saying before we hit the record button today, I was saying that I remember from this book when I read it. It was saying um, you should refrain from moving a piece multiple times in the opening. Now, how are we going to cover the book, though? We're going to do all of Chapter 1 today. Some of the beginning Chapter 1 stuff is very, very easy and quick. So we're going to kind of fly through it. And then the rest of the chapters for the series, we're going to do uh, only like one or two topics of each chapter because I want you on your own to finish the rest of it via uh, the links that you get from watching Forward Chess and also using it yourself. All right, cool. Uh, the link is right here, Elevation. Just command forward right there. Okay, so here he is. Boom, we got title page, right? And then, of course, I'm not going to read this, but you obviously can read this here. So preface, right? Okay, we got part one. So part one, let's see. The first thing, let's read some of this. The first thing a student should do is to familiarize himself with the power of the pieces, right? This is fundamental, fundamental. Is this book for, uh, for beginners or is this intermediate and ab above? Oh, it's, it's actually for everyone, beginner. And it's, it's really catered towards beginner and intermediate. Beginner, intermediate, but you could also be very advanced and very strong and learn something from this book. I mean, literally I did, like it's very fire. You can always re learn a little something or or have more appreciation for an idea from reading this book. But what it says is right, um, the first thing a student should do is to familiarize himself with the power of the pieces. This can best be done by learning how to accomplish quickly some of the simple mates. So, okay, cool, this is fine, whatever. This is gonna be easy, mac and cheese, yo. Thanks for the prime. So, all right. As I click this, boom, this is quite simple. As we see here, we're not gonna actually do this right here because this is fundamental, this is easy. A lot of us already know this. If you don't know this, then you, you are gonna have to work on this, but you can actually work on it right here on the app. You can move it here. You see, I'm moving the rope. I can move it here. I can also click over here on the side and it tells me Rook A7 is the best move, King G8, King G2. There's all type of text right here on the left. I can flip the board with this option right here. So I can flip it. I can move it from both sides. I can reset and go back from where I was. So it's very, very like it's easy, clickable, stuff like that. Okay, let me flip again. Boom. So, um, all right, I'm, we're not going to go through this because this is very simple. This one's the same. I can click on the diagram and this one's the same as well. Like it's a mate with king and rook. If you don't know how to do it, you can learn. You should be doing it here. They're talking about it here. Chess is literally fundamental. Fundamental. Here's another one. Boom. This one's King and Bishops. This one's really sweet, you know, but really, I mean, again, this is not that hard to do, actually. So we're not going to cover this one either. But it's just showing you here that, I mean, look at this one, King and Queen, right? Like we know this stuff. Or you shouldn't. If you don't, again, we just, you just go over here. Neat. I was always thought these books with heavy notation, but be a lot. And yeah, it's very interactive. It's easy for you to go through it. You can read these books faster. Pawn promotion. Let's see what it says. The gain of a pawn is the small, and read this stuff, right? All right, you see I'm reading it right now. I'm reading it to you because you, I, this is exactly exactly how I would actually read a, a chess book or any of the books that I have in forward chess. I read them just like this. The gain of a pawn is the smallest material advantage that can be obtained in a game, and it is often sufficient to win even when the pawn is only remaining the only remaining unit apart from the kings. It is essential speaking generally that... The king should be in front of his pawn with at least one intervening square. If the opposing king is directly in front of the pawn, then the game cannot be won. This can be explained by right here. Boom. So people that have problems with king and pawn end games, here you go right here. Right? Devoreski helps you, but also chess fundamentals, very fundamental stuff. It's going to tell you and break it down for you. Boom. Right here. Whose move is it? Oh, it's White's move. So King E4, King E6, but we're going to have opposition due to this pawn. There's Zug's Wong in, in the way. Zug's Wong in the way. So make sure we go through that. Okay, cool. Pawn endings. Nice. This one, we could probably start right here, maybe a little bit. Pawn endings. All right, what does it say? I should now give a couple of simple endings of two pawns against one or three against two that the reader may see how they can be won. Fewer explanations will be given as it is up to the student to work things out for himself. Let me read that again. 
as it is up to the student to work things out for himself. Furthermore, nobody can learn how to play while well merely from the study of a book. He's speaking in facts right now. This is Kappa back in the day, day, day. You know, it can only serve as a guide and the rest must be done by the teacher if the student has one. If not, the student must realize by longer and bitter experience the practical application of many things explained in this book. Wow. Bruh. Speaking facts. Okay, can you hear? Or at this position we have? Bitter experience, I know, right? Bitter experience. In this position, the move is F6, and then after captures, and actually you can follow it right here, F6. It says if king G8, then you can play F takes G7. You can also click down here on the little arrows to follow it. King G7. And then this one says if king D7, wow, it's another way. Oh, this is the mate way. Yeah, this is a cool way to do it. Check. And then queen g6 mate. This one, boom, another one. Okay, this one's white to move. Oh, nice one. So what does this say? In the above position, white cannot win with f5. And a lot of you probably would have played f5. Black's best answer would be g6. Wow. Which draws. Insane. You can also turn on the engine too if you ever wanted to see. You can click stockfish up here. <laughs> stockfish 11. <laughs> we probably got to get that. I'll probably check with them to see if they got a the stronger one. But. This is funny because um, actually I probably didn't update it. I'm sure they probably have the updated one. When you download it, check and see what your engine says up here. But, you know, you can use the uh, the engine right here just to turn on an engine to see what it would say if you really needed some help there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Pretty cool tool I like to use as well. Okay, so uh, G6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't win with G5. Wow, because G6 draws. Oh, snap. I actually thought it was G5. So I just learned something here myself. Bruh. I actually thought it was G5. Wow. Yeah, but he does play G6. So it's King E4. Wow. Okay, let's see it. King E4, King E6. F5, King F6, King F4, G6. What? Oh, G5. Yep. And then F6, and then we walk around him. Wow, F7, what a move. Oh my goodness. Y'all see that, bro? What's up, Kenty? What up? What's going on? We're going over chess fundamentals chap of chapter one right now. We're just flying through really the stuff here and kind of overview and showing you guys um how it works. You can actually go go set the go set up your forward chess here, right here. Go set it up and get the free book. This is the book we're looking at right now. It's in the in the in the link. Opposition in game is crazy, right? Yeah, it's just nuts. Box them out. Thanks for the pawn. King to the corner, push, it's always textbook. Textbook. Insane. All right, let's see what it says. This ending, apparently so simple, should show the student the enormous difficulties to be surmounted, even when there are hardly any pieces left. When playing against an adversary, uh, adversary who knows uh, how to use the resources at his disposal, and it should show the student also the necessity of playing strict, paying strict attention to these elementary things which form the basis of true mastership in chess. Fire. Ergen to Michael. Thanks for the follow. Oh, yeah. You study for years, right? In game. In, in this ending, wow. Look at this. White can win by advancing any of the three pawns on the first move. But it's convenient to follow the general rule. Whenever there is a good reason against... Whenever there's no reason... Oh, this is fire. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at this gym right here. You can use for the rest of your life. Are you kidding me right now? Look at this. Is... Look at this thing. You can literally use this gym for the rest of your life. It says that um, whenever there is no good reason against it. Right. Well, well, first off, it says follow the general rule. Whenever there's no good reason against it of advancing the pawn that has no pawn opposing it. So you need to push it. Basically, they're saying, right, you should push the pawn that has no pawn opposing it. Right? No pawn opposing So that's this one. General rule, push the pawn that has nothing opposing it. That's sweet. So you, you go at five. Now I knew this, but I forgot that it was in here. But I did know that. And I was like, wait, did I learn from here? I actually learned that from Devoretsky's in-game manual, which is actually here in forward chess as well. I think I actually do have a command for that. F5, king e7. King e5, king f7. 
H5, and we get here. Yeah, that's fire, right? That's fire, right? Elevation. Same thing. That's sweet. In, the, in these cases, the general rule is to act immediately on the side where you have superior forces. Look at this, boy. Oh, my God. Bro. Save it. I would watch this video back a hundred times. This is amazing, right? In any type of end game, these are general rules and principles that you probably never even knew. And this is stuff I actually do know, but it's good to see it again because I'm like, I know that already. But if you didn't know, right? And look at this position on the board. First off, look at the board, right? Look at the board. It says in general cases, the general rule is to act immediately on the side where you have superior forces. So without looking at this, remember, we just learned the rule, right? You should push which one of these pawns first. Which pawn should you push first? Right after what we just looked at, which pawn should you push first? And you also should act on the side that you have superior forces on. G pawn, G pawn, G pawn, G2. G2 is correct, chat. Very nice. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. Already learning. I don't have to hit y'all with the garbage, but I'm going to hit it anyway. For anybody that said h4 so g4 correct g4 is the move very nice a5 and then a4 king f6 h4 right g5 boom and we walk that boy home pretty easy okay let's see what it says some winning positions in the middle game nice all right so what is this one uh, which one are we on to how many more do we have? Okay, okay, cool. We're about to be done quickly. All right. So some some winning positions in the middle game. By the time the student has digested all that is previously explained. So if you did not understand, you have problems in the end game, go through the book one by one, read everything, and then get here. Um, he no doubt is is anxious to get the actual game and play with all the pieces. However, before considering the openings. Right, we didn't even look at openings yet, right? Look at this. We shall devote a little time to some combinations that often arise during the game. And which will give the reader some idea of the beauty of the game once he becomes better acquainted with it. Here's number 11. Okay, uh, and right here, this little button right here says it's black to move. So I'm going to flip it. So it's saying it's black to move in this combination. Um, wow. I mean, there's a file. Okay, let's see what it is. Rookie eight, yeah. And there's a file here. Oh, but there's mate. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, we didn't look at the threat. Look at this grossness. Queen takes h7. Boom. Sheesh. Hit me. Mm -mm -mm. Nasty queen sack. Very, very nasty. And there's a file here. But look at this just deadliness. It made it like that. Not a move. Okay. That's nasty. And here's another combo. It says, wait, is this, whose move is this? Oh, it tells you here, white to move. Okay, let's see it. Oh, this is uh no. Wait a second. Huh? Interesting. Is it queen takes? Or knight f5? Queen takes or knight f5? Okay, let's see it. Oh, wow, it's knight takes c6. Oh, yeah, simple. And then you do it. <laughs> you do the same thing. Bishop g5. You play bishop g5 here in 97. Whoa, what a move. 97? That's disgusting. Dang, knight e7. What a shot. Bishop takes e7, runs into queen takes h7. Same thing we just looked at. And then if you take with the queen, obviously we take the queen. It's pretty gross. Same thing, but ends with 96, yeah. Okay, 97, queen e7, rook takes, takes, and then queen d7. Oh, wow, beautiful. Skewer, I mean, a fork here, fork into bishops, game's over. Beautiful, here's the next one. This one is knight f6. I see it instantly. Knight f6, queen g3, bishop f6. This one right here. Boom, boom. Hit him here. And mate. Beautiful. Let's see what it says. This is another interesting type of combination. Black has a rook and a knight. Um, should therefore win unless white has to obtain some compensation. Yeah, tactics win games, knight of six. Takes, takes, take, and mate. Very nice. 
Same combo here. White to move. That's a um, knight. Of, oh, bishop d7, knight of six. Yeah, bishop d7, knight of six, rook g3, and then king h, and then uh, bishop f6. Very nice combination. Let's see it again. Here it is, bishop d7, queen takes d7, knight of six, rook g3, bishop f6. Got it. Very freaking combo is shown in the following position. Okay, let's see what the combo is. Looks like a Greek gift. We covered that in um, Tournament Guidebook, which is a playlist. You hit him here, and then you hit him this way. Then you come through the back door, see who's home, hitting, splitting. Queen h7 is made. Let's see what they have on the screen. They say, Bishop takes h7. You're on the side. Takes, Greek gift, works every time. Works every time. Next one. Combination, another combo. Let's see if we can find it first. I don't see it yet. Wow. I don't see it yet. Rate this series. Yeah. Chess Fundamentals is fire, bro. Dev by Lactose is amazing. Thanks for the follow, uh, Jerick. I think it's Knight H6. No, wait. Oh, it's just takes and then Greek gift. Same thing. Taking Greek gift. I think it's taking Greek gift, right? Yep, take and Greek gift. Thank you. Check. Knight 5 Check. Check. Probably rookie one. Oh. 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 Excuse me. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's read this. Wow, this is important. Look at this stuff. This is very important. This is not just like, you know... Hey, uh, you know, uh, do this opening like e forty five and uh, knight f three, knight c six, bishop b five. Oh, that's the Ray Lopez. Cool, watch videos on that. You don't understand. This is understanding. Okay, relative value. Excuse me, of the pieces. Okay, before going on to general principles of the openings, it is advisable to give the student an idea of the proper relative value of pieces. Can we say that one more time? Can we say that one more time? One more time, big cat. One more, one more time, Big Cap. Before going on to the general principles of the openings, it is advisable to give the student an idea of the proper relative value of the pieces. Is chess science correct? That's exactly what we talk about. There's no complete and accurate table for all of them. And the only thing to do is compare the pieces separately. Is this the Capablanca book? Yes, right here. You can get it right here, bro. Right here. For all the general theoretical purposes, the Bishop and the Knight have to be considered as of the same value, though it is my opinion that the bishop will prove the more valuable piece in most cases. I tell students this, yes, and it is well known that two bishops are always better than two knights. Y'all see that? Did you just learn something there? Who just learned something right there? Two bishops are almost always better than two knights. Wow. Hopefully you use that in your next game. The bishop will be stronger against pawns. Wait, wait, what did I say? No, no, this one's free. Uh, this one's free. Derp, 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 Von, Dave, they actually, yeah, this one's free. It actually is free. Um, okay, the bishop will be stronger against pawns than the knight. And in combination with pawns, will be almost be stronger against the rook than the knight would be. Okay, cool. No problem, got it. Capablanca spazzed on this one. Thanks, bro. Thanks, Canty, no problem. No problem. I mean, he's going crazy. A bishop and a rook are also stronger than a knight and a rook. Okay. But a queen and a knight may be stronger than a queen and a bishop. Yes. A bishop will often be worth more than three pawns, but a knight is very seldom. So, may not even be worth so much. A rook will be worth a knight and two pawns, or a bishop and two pawns. But as said before, the bishop will be a better piece against the rook. Two rooks are slightly stronger than a queen. They are slightly weaker than two knights and a bishop. Wow, look at that. But I mean, that is three pieces. It makes sense. Slightly weaker, yes. Two rooks are slightly stronger than a queen, which we already know that. We should, if you don't, then you know now. They are slightly, they are slightly weaker, though, than two knights and a bishop. And a little more so than two bishops and a knight. 
more so than wow. The power of the knight decreases as the pieces are exchanged off. Power of the rook, on the contrary, increases. Okay, the king, a purely defensive piece throughout the middle game, becomes an offensive piece right for the end game. Once all the pieces are off the board, and sometimes even when there are one or two minor pieces left, the handling of the king becomes of paramount importance once the end game stage is reached. Amazing. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this right here. If you haven't paid attention at all, you need to pay attention right here, right now. You need to pay attention right now. The general strategy of the opening. The main thing is to develop the pieces quickly. Let me say that one more time. Hold up. Bruh. The main thing is to develop the pieces quickly for all the people that play like this. Garbage. Oh, for you. Garbage. And for all your garbage play. Garbage. And for all the people that don't understand. And you just did this probably five minutes ago. The main thing is to develop the pieces quickly. General strategy of the opening. Get them into play as fast as you can. From the outset, two moves, e4 or d4. Open up lines for the queen and a bishop. Therefore, theoretically, one of these two moves must be the best as no other moves accomplish so much. So then he's showing you. Okay, e4. Right, you'll see e5. Knight f3. Look what he says, too. This is both attacking and developing move. He's really going over every move here. Like how, I mean, it doesn't get more easy and simple than this. Like, following a game like this. Bishop b5. It's generally advisable not to bring this bishop out until one knight is out. Bro, did you even know that? Did, who knew that? Who actually, who actually knew that? Who actually really knew that rule? It's generally advisable not to bring this bishop out. The light square bishop until one knight is out. He didn't say which one, but and actually now he said, there it is. Excuse me. Preferably the king's knight is what he said. Bishop opening garbage then. I mean, you can place it with a garbage. Garbage. Kappa, like, yeah, it's garbage, but it is playable. The bishop could also have been placed on c4, but it is advisable whenever possible to combine development with attack. I mean, man, my guy, Kappa, big cap went off. He went off, my guy. He went off. Bishop b5 and then bishop to b4. Okay. Black replies in the same manner. Castle's indirect way of preventing that bishop takes c3. Castles, d3, d6. Okay, bishop g5. Let's see what it says about bishop g5. Very powerful move. Brings us to the middle game stage as there is already a view, a combination to win with knight to d5. Okay, this threat makes it impossible for black to continue the same course. This c4 is superior, he says. Yeah, yeah, if you like, I mean, it's style, right? Style. And definitely style. Okay, let's see what he got to say here, because there is a lot. Um, first, the complete development of the opening has taken only seven moves. This varies up to 10 or 12 moves in some very exceptional cases. As a rule, eight should be enough. Second, wow, you see what he's saying? Eight moves for developing in like castling. Eight. Eight. Not 28. Not 38. Not 108. Oh, now let me castle. Okay. You know, I'm talking to someone right now you know he said eight moves here right okay second black has been compelled to exchange a bishop for a knight but as a compensation he has isolated white's a pawn and doubled a pawn okay all right cool so i guess he's talking about this right here third white by exchange brings up a pawn to control the d4 square so he's talking about this but blacks on the defensive and as experience will show thus keeps the initiative an unquestionable advantage the value of initiative is explained in section 20 page 77 so maybe we'll cover that let's go but what up zinc zan six thanks for the follow too what up all right perfect here we go here we go let's see what else this says the strategical principles expounded above are the same for all openings didn't we say that before in a different video didn't i say that to y'all all openings are the same right Wow. I mean, my, my guy, Cap, Big Cap, like, he's speaking facts here. The strategical principle is expounded. Above all the same for all the opening, or, or above are the same for all the openings. <laughs> Cap ain't Cap and facts. Fix, Cax, thanks for the follow. E5, thanks for the follow. Okay, only their tactical application varies according to their, uh, their circumstances. 
Before proceeding further, I wish to lay stress on the following point, which the students should bear in mind. All right, let's read it. I mean, we've been learning a lot. Let's go. Before proceeding further, oh, wait, wait, before development has been com completed. Let's see that. Let's see that. Oh, didn't I say that? Didn't I say that? Before development has been completed, no piece should be moved more than once. Right? Didn't we say that? Unless it is essential in order to obtain either material advantage or secure freedom of action. Usually try not to move your pieces multiple times, right? A lot of y'all do that. A lot of you guys do that. You did that today. You just lost the game like that, right? I know I'm talking to you right now. Yes. Yeah, stop moving your pieces multiple times. Try not to unless you have to or you have a good plan. The beginner would do well to remember this as well as what has already been stated. Bring out the knights before bringing out bishops. Jackfruit, thanks for the follow. Control the center. Four squares, e4, d4, um, e4, d4, e5, d5, and each side respectively are the center squares. We already know that. These are the center, correct. Unless I have to, says Tommy. Right. The control of the center is great importance. That's correct. No violent attack. Listen up. You know, for me and my, uh, my Tao people, shout out to my grandfather Tao. No violent attack can succeed without controlling at least two of, of these squares or possibly three. Bro, did you? What? Like, I mean, that is just the next level right there. If you didn't know that, I mean, you can be advanced and still know and not know that. No violent attack can succeed without controlling at least two or two or three of the center squares. So if you're an attacking player, wild attacks, if you're not controlling the center with at least two or three squares, it's not going to work. You already know now. You already know this now. Look at that. Unbelievable. That's beautiful. Okay. Many a maneuver in the opening has for its sole object, the control of the center, which invariably ensures the initiative. That was very... Okay, cool. Yeah, Kappa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. It is well always to bear in this mind since it will often be the reason of the series of moves which cannot otherwise be properly understood. Cool, bro. Yeah. As this book progresses, I shall dwell more fully on these different points. At present, I shall devote some time to openings. We're going to talk about openings later. The student will in that way train his mind in proper direction. Okay. Thank you very much. Looks like a game here. Definitely cover that game. Definitely look at this game. This is on you to do this. Traps. So he's saying I shall, I think that's the last one too, of chapter one. So you can see right here above me or right next to me as I'm scrolling. You can also move this around too, by the way. If you wanted to make it smaller or bigger, you wanted to see everything, right? This actually, by the way, we're going to cover the rest of the chapters like this. Chapter two, we're going to look at a few things in here. We're not going to cover all of them. But today we're covering all of chapter one. We're on traps now. The rest of these, right, Eric, we're going to cover a few in here. Maybe we might do this whole one because it's smaller, right? But we're going to cover all of these. It's going to be like five, six, maybe seven videos, something like that. And uh, walking you guys through this. And it is a free book that you guys can get using Command Forward. Or if you're on YouTube watching, you can uh, get it in the description. So here, um, Traps. Is it online somewhere? It's right here, Kelly. This is a great book by Capablanca. Yeah. Spire. Okay, traps. Well, let's see these traps before we finish up here. Ah, oh, nice. 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 Right? Let's just show it here. Boom. D takes E5. Boom. Knight takes E5. Oh, my goodness. And then you hit him with the move. Bam. Knight takes E5. Oh! Get him out of here. Oh, wow. And then after he sacks the queen, that's me. Hit him on F7. Send him to heaven. After King E7, Knight E5, and we live. That's mate. Get him out of here. A oh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. That's a puzzle, a trap you should know. Here's another one. Boom. Here's another one. Well, very simple here. Loose pieces, loose games. They call that LPDL on chess kids. Shout out to chess kids. And then um, LPDL, loose pieces drop off. Um, loose pieces, loose games. Loose is undefended. Easy tactic. Hit him on F7. Boom. Well, he played E6. Why didn't they show it? <laughs> like, it's black to move. I'm looking at it wrong. But Bishop takes F7 is about to be the move in 95 and we live get the man off the board. So, but this was black to move, so I have to flip. E6 is the move. 
And then a knight f6 would run into what they're saying is knight f6, which is a nice development move following Kappa's rules, right? Develop your pieces and stuff. But if knight f6, you get hit, boom, bishop takes f7. Hitting knight e5, and we live. Ouch. Check. Double attack. We take those. You take back. I take two, and you're not castling, by the way. Ugly. Very ugly. Very ugly position. Oh, it looks like that's it. Looks like that is it. And that is chapter one. That's the end of chapter one. You see chapter two is right here. Boom. We're not going to cover none of that. In fact, I'm going to get that off the screen so y'all can't read all of that. That's chapter one of forward chess for uh for the uh, chess fundamentals. We ran through it as fast as we could here, about 30 minutes in. So uh, make sure you guys are using this this tool. We're going to cover chapter two tomorrow, a lot of chapter two. And, uh, and get through this so you guys can learn. It's going to be fun here. Make sure you get forward chess right there. Guys, subscribe to the YouTube, and I'll see you guys on the next video.